Good day. Today I'm starting to record a series of lessons on working with PCG. This stands for Procedural Content Generation. What is PCG for? I recently needed to convert a scene from 3 Dis Max to Unreal. The scene had quite a lot of trees and landscaping. When I tried to do all this with foliage, I'm tired of repeating what I did using the multi scatter in 3 Dis Max. After that, I opened PSG, started studying and got the result that can be obtained using any scatters. Corona scatter, F-Storm scatter, multi scatter. We will have a similar result with PCG. You can control the density of trees, grass, bushes, the number of plants and so on. You will see everything in the process. Let's get started. The first thing we need to do is go to plugins and write PCG. We need this one. Check the activity box. By default it is disabled. The program will ask you to restart. After restart the plug it becomes active. Next, in the content folder, create a PCG folder. I already have several blanks here. What do we need to do next? Right click, find PCG and launch PCG graph. Click create empty. Done. Let's name it test. Open. This is how it looks like. That is, here we are building the PCG itself. Here we have a preview. And here are the settings. Everything is just like in the standard Unreal window. What do we have next? I already made the landscape. With hillocks and ravines. Just to make it more interesting, let's get started. The first thing we need is to right click and type get landscape data. Now we take the sampler out of it. Surface sampler. Done. We drag our PCG into the scene. It appeared. So that we can see the work results. We either press the right button and select debug or press D on the keyboard. And now we see the points that are being created on the landscape. When we drag them, we recalculate their position taking into account the terrain. That is, we were transported to the mountains and the points were located throughout the mountains. Removed from the mountains and they returned to a flatter surface. We can then scale them up further. Recommendation from me. Here from the right part. If you've zoomed in on this part, clean it and generate again. This way you will avoid mistakes in your work. I need to make it a little smaller. I don't need such a big one now. Done. Clean up and generate. Move on to settings. What do we have here in the surface sepler? Our first parameter is density. Do you see how dense the mesh has become right away? And the second size of the cubes. Let's set it lower. Let's set it to 20. Objects will be placed at these points. Grass, rocks, whatever. So now we'll diversify them a little bit. Right transform points. What does he give us? We can randomness our cubes. Increase the maximum scale to 1.2. 
and the minimum is 0.8. And our cubes become different sizes. Disable debugging here and enable debugging here. You see, everyone suddenly became a different size. But 4 is too much, 1.2 is just right. This will need to be tried in each specific case. We'll set the density to 0.2. What else can we do here? We can rotate them. Let's set it to minus 5 degrees. We will rotate along the z-axis from minus 360 to 369. And here we set x and y to 5 degrees and 360 degrees. Like this. We might need this absolute check mark when we want the trees to grow straight up. That is, aligned along the z-axis. We don't need it for the grass. For the shrubs, it depends on the situation, but we're not put it yet. And we will set the offset of the cubes. 100 and minus 100 for x and y. And we won't put anything on z for now. That is, let it remain as is. And here 100 and 100. So now what else can we do? We can add a node here called spatial noise and reconnect it. Let's reconnect it. Let's debug. This gave us variety in the density of the cubes. Somewhere there will be a denser arrangement, and somewhere less. To do this, go to the transform and set the scale parameter. I'll set it to 50. That's it. Let's try 100. I went too far here. That's how we leave it. Now let's turn off debugging again. And enable the visibility of transformation points. So, now in order to. Let's connect the grass. Here we'll pull and write a static mesh spawner. Here it is. We will add our grass to it. Here we disable debugging, it won't be needed anymore. Now I'll find the grass we'll use in the content folder and show it on it first. Well, let's say it's like this. And now look here. I'll turn it around a bit so you can see it. Here in this little thing called Mesh Selector. Click on the plus sign and a grid appears. And drag the object here. You see, we already have grass on our plot. We can make more. There are no limits. The main thing is not to get confused. We'll close this one. Let's open the first one. No, I don't want that one. Let's add this one. Like this. Let's do the second one. And add another third. Done. We have some grass bushes. But we're clearly lacking density. Let's go to surface sampler. Our density has become much higher. We need to increase it to one or even more. Only with grass. 
On trees, bushes, or just on individual bushes of tall grass we put 0.1 or 0.3, no more. I'll reduce the density a bit for the rest of the story. Now look what else we can do here. In the parameter settings we can change the weight of our meshes. The higher the parameter, the more specific bush will be shown. The higher the parameter, the more specific bush will be shown. I'll show you using prepared cubes as an example. Let's replace. 1 2 and 3 Let's reduce the density even more. Oh, of course, 2 is a lot, 0 0.2 is enough. Expand parameters. If we put, say, 10 on these cubes, then there will be more green ones. Let's put 20 and there will be even more of them, and the rest will be less. If we need to increase the density of others, we add 10 here. Here they are diversified. The most interesting thing is that this parameter has no limits. This isn't a percentage or a ratio. We test it through experience. Let's set up three. That is, a little more red than blue and less green, so. Let's give it a five, like this. I think this is all clear. Now I will add another block here. It's called the density filter. Here is it. Let's connect it here. What is it for? I will break this connection. With its help we can select specific cubes by density. For example, right now, from 0.8 to 1.0, nothing was selected, and from 0.1 to 0.3 has already appeared. Now I'll try to explain why this is necessary. So as not to have to create the entire logic every time. We can only use the density filter and static mesh spawner, and by adjusting the parameters here we can set different groups of plants. For example, from 0.8 to 1 tree. From 0.5 to 0.8 shrubs, in this principle. This way you can achieve good variety. Connect here. For what you need to do too. How to add an additional spawner. As I said, there is no need to copy all the logic. It's enough to duplicate these two things. And connect to transformation. We will have similar transformations everywhere. These parameters are suitable. And here in this spawner we indicate other plants. That is, here we have bushes grass. We can add some bushes. That's how it all works. I hope you enjoyed the lesson. Don't forget to like it and comment on topics you'd like to see covered. These are introductory lessons. In future episodes, I'll cover how to work with splines and further complicate the logic. The link to the new lessons will be in the description. Thank you for your attention. Goodbye.